So today we're going to talk about special functions. This is 2.6 in your book. Remember to take notes and answer the survey question at the end. So first we're going to talk about a constant function. It's a linear function in the form of y equals b, where b is some number. So it's always going to be a horizontal line. So no matter what x equals on the x-axis, y is going to be the, sum, the same number. So for in this situation, y is always going to be 3. So we have a horizontal line at 3. That's a constant function. The identity function of a linear function in the form of y equals x. So no matter what x is, it's going to be equal y. So we have x equals 1, then y equals 1. So we would put our point right here. x equals 2, y equals 2. We'd have our point right here. And then we'd form our line. You can also look at this as the slope of 1 with an y intercept of 0. You can see it intercepts the y axis at 0. That's the identity function. All right, we're going to look at the absolute value function. It's a function in the form of y equals mx, the absolute value of mx plus b plus c, where m is not 0. So it's going to be a v. So this is the absolute value of 2x of x minus 2 minus 1. The vertex of this is at 2, negative 1. You can see the vertex, which is the bottom point down here, is at 2, negative 1. So if we were to plug in values, we would have, uh, for x, like 3, we would get 3 minus 2, which is 1, minus 1, and that hits at 0. So absolute value functions are going to create this V shape. Another absolute value, this is the negative of an absolute value, so it reflects over the x-axis and makes this V shape pointing down. So we can always just plug in values for x to see, so x of 0, so that would be a positive 1 in the absolute value, and then the negative makes it a negative 1, so we here's our point here. So we could always just see that. Plug in points for x to find our graph. The vertex on this is the maximum point, which is negative 1, 0. Right there. All right. So let's graph y equals the absolute value of x minus 3. So we need our chart. We're going to have uh, five values for x. And then we're just going to solve those values to get our graph. So we'll plug in negative 2 for x and solve. The absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2 which minus 3 equals negative 1, and then we'll see 2, negative 2, negative 1 point right here. Plug in negative 1, get the absolute value of negative 1, minus 3 is negative 2, so negative x equals negative 1, you get negative 2 down here, and so on. That's how we get those points, and that's how we got this graph. The vertex on this absolute value is the minimum point, and it's at 0, negative 3. The minimum because there's nothing below this on this graph. All right, the greatest integer function is a, is a very special function. Uh, so anytime we see this, the greatest integer just means we're going to take the greatest integer less than or equal to the value of x. So for example, the largest integer less than or equal to negative 3, ha three and a half is negative 4. And the largest integer less than or equal to 2.99 is 2, so you're always rounding down on the greatest integer function. So this is what the graph looks like. So any value between 2 and 3 is going to round down to 2 So on the y, so that's why we have this line right here. Any value between 2 and 3 graphs to 2, so we have a line at 2. <clears throat> so if we want to look at the greatest integer of x plus 2, we make our table, and we get the greatest integer of negative 3, that's going to be negative 3, plus 2 is going to be negative 1. The greatest integer of negative 2.75, that's also negative 3, so that's why we also got a negative 1. So let's go down and then look at negative 2. Negative 2, the greatest integer of negative 2 plus 2 is 0. 1, negative 1 1.5 also goes to negative 2, plus 2 is 0. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1, 0 plus 2 is 2. And you see how where we're getting these numbers. So that would be the graph for this function. 
the greatest integer of x plus 2. Right? So now we're going to look at piecewise functions. Piecewise functions are defined on various intervals. So for this one, this is saying x, x, when x is less than 0, our graph is negative x. But when x is greater than or equal to 0, our graph is 2x plus 3. So when we want to find f of 3, if you look, our x is 3. So x would be greater than 0. So we'd use 2x plus 3 to find our uh, point. And that means y when we plug 3 in for x. And that makes a 9. Sorry. And then to find f of negative 2. So negative 2 is less than 0. So we're going to use negative x. So we get negative 2 times a negative, which would be a positive 2. So let's graph negative f, f, f of x equals negative x, where x is le, would be less than 0. So when we do that, it, it cannot equal 0, so we have the hole in our graph. When x is negative 1, y is a positive 1. When x is a negative 2, y is a positive 2, and that's how we got that line. Let's graph f of x equals 2x plus 3, where x is greater than or equal to 0. So at this time, when we plug 0 in, it, it can equal 0. So when we plug 0 in, it, we get a positive 3. And then we put 1 in for y, x, we get a positive 5. So that's how we got y. So the piecewise function is when we put those two together. That would be a piecewise function. Two different pieces that are put together. Make sure you copy this chart down in your notes. And answer the survey questions. Have a great night.